this program, you're in this program for a year, and for the whole year, you just go to our classes, and then once you graduate, then if, when you hear the next year, we can see if you're eligible to go to work. I said, no, no. what's going on everyone and welcome back to another video happy saturday happy birthday to me because today technically is saturday even though i'll be uploading this video tomorrow which is sunday so happy father's day to all the fathers happy father's day to my father happy father's day to all of the men that are fathers i don't have time for that bashing me and just not fathers i don't have time for that but happy father's day before we get into this story time, you guys, make sure you like and subscribe and turn your on <laughs> turn on your notification bell so you don't miss these uploads. How you guys doing? I know everybody's wondering. This is the wig I was talking about in my previous video. This is Audrey by Sensational What Lace Collection. This is an OMB. Okay, you guys, I like it. I love it. I do want to say that it sheds when you kind of brush it, but it's not like heavy shedding. I've had a wig that has had heavy shedding. This one doesn't really have heavy, heavy shedding, but it does shed. Um, not when I run my hands through it, so that's a good thing. But just if I had to say what was the biggest con to this wig, it would be the shedding. Other than that, I really, really love this wig. I'm really, really happy with this wig. It did turn out exactly how I thought it was gonna turn out. Like, it's perfect. I'm sorry, you guys, I broke a nail. <laughs> I broke a nail. Anyways, let's get into this story time. And I'm really, really excited to share this experience with you guys because to me, it was a big lesson. And I just felt like I got some good out of it. And I took some bad out of it. Either way, it was an experience. So, with that being said, I had run into a situation. And um, I'm not going to get into that situation in this story time. This is kind of long. It's a story all in itself. But I ran into a situation. And I ended up in a shelter. And so, this is like 2015. And I was in one shelter. Me and my son was in one shelter. We were out in Plymouth. I'm not going to give the names of these shelters. But I will give you the city. We were out in Plymouth, which is in Minnesota. And it was a, it was a regular shelter. It was one for women and kids. Or just single women, but women and kids. Um, I mean, it was an average shelter. But I had never really... It, it never really been like in a shelter shelter so I just was very God just went in like very neutral like I went in first of all let me say I went in like I didn't want to be friends I don't want to be nobody friend I'm not here to be nobody friend I'm here to do my time <laughs> do my time do what I gotta do and keep going so uh, with that being said, I just kind of went in, you know, they have you talk to people like an advocate and ask you where are you here, da da da, and you know, so on and so forth. So I'm there. It's a bunch of people. It's a bunch of kids. You know, and usually in shelters, you are in a room with other people. So me and my son, we were in a room with like, I don't know. It had two pepper bunk beds, I believe. And it was in a room. Like I said, I'm an introvert, period. And then, especially going into some type of situations, I don't want to be like your friend. I'm not coming here to make friends. You're not finna, we not finna do this right here. And and talk and gossip, we're just not gonna do that. So, that's how I would agree to myself. People would speak to me and I would, you know, yeah. You know, what you in for? What the fuck is this? What do you mean what am I in for? <laughs> like, you know, so it just was, you know. Okay, so moving on. And then I showed her. 
And the good thing that I liked about being in that shelter was that it had its kitchen and we can cook our own food. You can cook your own food, but they also offer like food. And I mean, it wasn't bad food, but it wasn't bad food. It just wasn't food that I particularly took in. So at the time, I was getting EBT, which was food stamps. And I'm like, no, I'm just going to make my son our own food. Like, that's what we did. We had our own food. We ate exactly what we were going to cook that day. So I was not leaving anything in nobody's refrigerator. I wasn't labeling anything. None of that was happening. It was a place that you could bring food in. You could take, like, closed things up to your room. So, like, pops or chips or candies. But it couldn't be, like, open food and it couldn't be taken out. So... I was only buying in where we were going to be cooking that day um, at that time. Other than that, if we, I only bought enough to eat, but let's just say that we didn't finish it. We wasn't saving it. It was going in the garbage or it was given to somebody else. So that was that. I did meet some good people after a while. When I say some, I mean two. I did meet like uh, two people that were roommates. And I was so happy because, like I said, I'm an introvert. And when you go into shelters, you just never know what you're going to get. You never know who you're going to room with. You know, you never, like, you can't pick the people. So I was very, very, very happy that I had got roommates that were as clean as I was, that was as respectful as I was. We just kind of, we kind of fit. And so we ended up being really good friends. Fast forward and this was a shelter that you could only stay for like 30 days I think and then after that you had to like they had to see if they wanted to extend it by another 30 days. So I was already looking for places and then transitional shelters which is shelters that are more long term for like a year or two years just because it's at the time when stuff was happening i knew i couldn't get a place in 30 days i had a whole situation going on and i knew me getting a place in 30 days was very unrealistic so i had to look for transitional shelters boom here we go got into a, a transitional shelter and you have to have like an interview you have to have an interview to get into the shelter so i'm like Okay, this is new. But okay, you know, I always do good job interviews. So, I mean, it's a shelter interview. How hard could it be? So, the shelter is in St. Paul. Of course, I'm not going to get the name. But it's a shelter, and it was in St. Paul. And you basically have an advocate. Um, you fill out for the shelter. They call you. They, you know, what you come in for an interview. So, you have an advocate. She comes, or it's two people. Summertime crime, baby. Summertime crime. Um... <laughs> So, you have an interview with two people to interview me. And it was basically a faith-based shelter. Now, I'm already a Christian. At that time, <laughs> at that time, I was like, I was lost. You know, I knew the right thing to do. But mentally, I was kind of lost, to be honest, because I was going through so many things. I was trying to figure so many things out. I had my son with me. I was kind of like, you know. I was, and I, at the time, I still had what I had going on. So, with that being said, uh, it was a phase based. So, I asked you questions. You're like, how are you with Christ? And, you know, what do you want to become? And I go to church often. And what led you to God? And I'm like, I'm just giving all the right answers. You know, like you're doing a regular job interview. You might not know, but you just give all the right answers. So I was just honestly giving all the right answers, you guys, to be honest. At the time, like I said, I wasn't thinking about Christ. I mean, I was, but the questions they were asking me, I'm kind of like, I'm going to just tell y'all what y'all want to hear because y'all seem like this. And me and my son, we really need a place to sleep. So that's what I did. Boom, two days later, lady called me. Like, oh, you know, you want to come to our shelter, we chose you, da, 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 So I'm like, cool, because my time was already running out at this shelter. So I thought it was perfect that they had called like two days later and I was like, okay, and then you come to this shelter, da, da, da. So cool, we go into the shelter. It was a really nice shelter. It looked like a um, hotel building, because of course it was downtown St. Paul. It looked like a hotel building. You had a room that was like, a studio and it had your bathroom which was separate 
Um, you had your own key, came with two beds for you and your kid, if that's what you had. Um, it was really nice. Like, there was really nothing wrong with the, you know, the lot, the living. You know, they had a lunchroom, it was a cafeteria. You could not cook your own food, but we're getting to the good stuff. Uh, you could not cook your own food, <laughs> but they had a cafeteria and it was nice. It was mine. You know, like I said, I had my own key. You go in, you close the door, it was nothing. I kept it as clean as I want because I have OCD. Cool. We get married two days later, um, and it was cool. You know, like I said, it was cool. People were nice. Like I said, I go into any place, especially a shelter. I'm still an introvert. You know, I still am to myself. You know, I'm not going to open up. This shelter had classes. They were all faith-based classes. So they want to keep you busy throughout the day. Classes at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and I'm like, okay. You know, I'm used to getting up. From that past 30 days, I'm used to getting up. I'm used to hitting outside. When I say hitting outside, I mean job applications, talking to people about, you know, my current situation, housing, so on and so forth. When I say housing, I don't mean Section 8. I mean, I'm going to pay you rent and you're going to let me move in. So that's what I was used to doing. So when they told me that I couldn't, that I had classes from 8 to 4, I'm like, okay. I thought it was kind of awkward. And then I thought, okay, well... You know, you have to live here. So, I got to do this on my own time. So, time goes on, time goes on. And I had to stop. And I had to go to my advocate. Because I'm seeing that I'm steady going to these classes. But where is my time to do what I need to do to get out of here? I didn't see that time. I didn't understand. So, I go to my advocate. I'm going to ask her. I sit down. You know, she's like, oh, yeah, come in. Nice white lady. Yeah, come in. I'm like, great. You know, I'm like, the classes are great. The shelter is, you know, great. Thank you. You know, so on and so forth. I said, but, um, I need to look for a job. I'm like, and if we had classes at 8 till about 2 or 2.30, 4, you know, where, where do we have time to do that? Not only that, but we had Sunday school on Wednesdays, and then we had to go to church on Sundays. Okay. So, I'm like, you know, where... How do I, how am I supposed to make money? You know, how am I supposed to get the situation started? She's like, you don't work here. I said like, no, I, I know I don't work here. I know, I know y'all work here. But I mean like, I need to go to work. She's like, no, 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 that's what I mean. She said, when you're in this program, you're in this program for a year, and for the whole year, you just go to our classes, and then once you graduate, then, if, when you hear the next year, we can see if you're eligible to go to work. I said, no, 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 that, 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 I'm, I must have missed that in the interview when y'all was asking me about Christ. <laughs> like, I must have missed that because I gotta go to work. And you have to have already, like, came in with a job. I didn't come in with a job. And so, they was just, like, saying, oh, well, you're gonna have to be part of this these classes because you didn't come in working and at the time maybe she did mention it and it flew over my head but I was completely confused and I was like oh no. <laughs> no and so she said that like, okay you know I kind of left I was kind of you know in my head I'm, I'm like mm. I'll go back to my room and I'm you know confused like <laughs> Excuse me, what? You know, at the time, I was getting... So, at the time, I was getting cash assistance and EBT. What happened was I was not getting cash assistance at first. I was just getting EBT. But in Minnesota, in Minneapolis, you have to pay to live in their shelters. Craziest fucking thing I've ever heard. You have to pay to live in their shelters. So, when I was going to this shelter, they said one of the requirements was that you get cash assistance. And then we'll take it right out your EBT card. And then you'll have like $100 or something left over. So I'm like, cool, you know, like, whatever, it's easy, I don't know, you know, whatever. Um, so that was how I ended up getting cash. So I was paying to stay there. Um, but, you know, I just, you tell me all I'm able to do or make is what the government is asking me. It didn't sit well with me. So I started sneaking. 
Like, I literally was sneaking to do get jobs. And I would go. So I had a, the friend that was in the previous shelter in Plymouth. She got into the shelter that I was in, the literally the next apartment next to me. So we are, like, still friends to this day. She's awesome. Um, and so she was in there, too. And we was both kind of, conf you know, confused. Like, what do you mean? So I would sneak. I would get, like, temp jobs. Because at the time, I was going through a situation. And I could only get temp jobs at the time. So, I was just getting temp jobs, and I was going to those temp jobs. And they would be like, oh, where were you, this, this, and this. And I'm like, um, I couldn't make it. You know, I worked left or something like that because I had to work. And they were saying, giving me checks, so I was able to go cash them and not, you know, have to worry about if they're going to see that I got extra money, da, 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 da. That's what I was doing for a very long time. Then, I started to get irritated. Like, I started to feel like after a couple of months, me, I graduated. Because you got to graduate from the classes and they give you all these classes and you graduate. So I graduated and things of that nature. And I'm like, I can't. I have to work. No. Like, at the time, I was only getting like three something a month from food, I mean, from cash assistance. There was no way you was expecting me to live off a hundred dollars a month because y'all have to take y'all pay so there was no way you expected me to live off a hundred dollars a month i've never been that kind of woman i was not raised that way like i just wasn't raised that way and on top of that i can't stand assistance they want too much of your business they want it all you know they want too much every time i look in the mailbox it's something that they you got to give them like no y'all y'all doing way too much so I just was not with it. And after a while, I just left. <laughs> after a while, I was like, no, I need to work. And it probably, you know, I'm going to say that it was hard. When I decided to leave and I didn't have a place to go, and a lot of people would think, well, yeah, that's dumb. You left and you didn't have a place to go. What's dumb is thinking I'm from about $100 a month. That's what's done. What's done is I could be working a job, a uh, temp jobs up and down the street, and you know I would have way more money, and I would probably get a lot further than I would if I just sat here and tried to save literally the hundred dollars that I was having left over, and that's not even counting just miscellaneous things that were needed. So you really didn't have anything left over when you got done. So it just wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it didn't suit me. It didn't suit me. I didn't think it was realistic. And I really felt like they wanted people to stay there. And I was seeing girls coming in and out. But I also seen girls that was there for like one, two, three years. And I'm like, living off of what? Like, like, so it just wasn't me. It wasn't me. I couldn't do it. I felt like I'm going to be held back if I sit here for one, two years not making any type of income. So I left. And, you know, like I said, it was hard. Leaving with no plan was hard. That was like, it was like, where do I go now? Um, you know, all I knew was that I could work. That was all I knew. At that time, that was even hard because I had my son. He was still going to school out in Plymouth. And um, that, was a, that was a struggle. So I'm like, how do I work? How do I do this? How do I do this? I had ran into so many, like, it's just the amount of things that I ran into. The amount of, like, deep, dark places that I was in once I left were just you know it was it was crazy but had i not done that i'd be still sitting my ass <laughs> i'd still be sitting there broken hell literally if you don't get up and leave you gonna be stuck here you know i no 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 and so yes it probably was not the best move to make but i had to do it i had to have to have to do it and i'm glad that i did it because i would still be handicapped like, I would still be, 
you know, stuck around going to these classes and faith and all this. And I'm a big believer in Christ. I'm a big believer in faith. But I'm also a big believer in if you don't get yourself out there and do the work, nothing's going to happen for you. So that was my thing, <laughs> you know, in that shelter. I can honestly say, you guys, I had visited a lot of shelters after that. You know, it's unfortunate that it wasn't just like that one and um that one that was it there were many shelters after that because like i said i did not have a plan i just knew that i had to work and every shelter after that was not long term so they were just very in and out and i was just kind of in and out because i'm like i have to work i have to do what i have to do i have to save i have to you know i have to find a way so it was hard um you know going through that I learned a lot those years right there in my life where I was in and out of shelters those were years that I think I learned the most because it made me work harder than I think I've ever had to work before in my entire life like I was hitting the pavement okay I was working hard I didn't have a choice I didn't have a place to live you know and all I had to think about was that my son needed a place to live and that I needed a place to live and that I needed to survive and that we needed to make it so with that being said the jewel in that and it's a lot of jewels in that scenario but for me the jewel in that was you know you gotta stay strong. That's hard. It's hard when you by yourself, but it's even harder when you have a kid. When you have a child, or one, or two, or four, and I've seen people with five, six kids in shelters, and I'm like, here, yeah, devil has lied to you because no. Um, <laughs> but when you are in shelters with your child or your children, having to stay strong is probably one of the hardest. It's not even a shelter that's hard. It's your kids that you have to. You have to like look at every day and you have to, you know, you have to just be bigger and be better than the situation. And you have to stay positive and you have to like, you just gotta like be hopeful. You really gotta be hopeful in the situation. Um, and I was like, I was out there, I was doing the damn thing, but I was hopeful. And I was working hard and I just refused to allow anything to stop me. I, I lost so many jobs just due to the fact to, that I didn't have, um, I didn't have childcare and going from job to job and my son was going from school to school and it was just, it was an experience. But staying strong has to be, you know, you have to, you just have to. You have to. You have to be sure. You have to get that strength from somewhere. And you got to laugh. Sometimes I, I still laugh to this day. I just laugh. I laugh. You know, I laugh <laughs> because when you think about where you... How did you find where it's literally lifetime outside? Um, when you have to, you know... You got, when you have to make it, like, you just got to make it. You got to make it. You got to think about, you know, the end, the outcome, what you're working towards and what you're working for. I'm 29 today. Today's my birthday. It's Saturday, June 20th. And I'm so grateful. Like, this morning I woke up and I was thinking, somebody had sent me a text. And it was like, well, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? And I was finna say, I don't know. Like, honestly, because I woke up and I'm like, I don't know how I'm feeling. But... Instead, I erased it and I put grateful because I remember how many times, how many birthdays I spent outside, how many birthdays I spent in a shelter, you know, how many birthdays I spent where I didn't do anything, I couldn't afford anything. And so just waking up in my own space, waking up with my son, waking up, being able to pay my bills every day, being able to go out and get a Starbucks when I need to, like that is something to be grateful for. And so if it wasn't for those experiences, I probably would be selfish, to be honest. I probably would be very selfish, very just like ignorant to a lot of shit. 
And so I'm so happy that I went through those things and I was strong enough to make it out of those things and make it out of those situations. And there's people who are in shelters who it's hard for them. They are in shelter after shelter after shelter after shelter with their kids and they don't know what to do and they don't know where to go and you know they're sad and they're depressed and have anxiety and PTSD and that shit is realistic. That shit is real. That shit is hard and people go through it and it's a part of life but you have to gotta have that strength and you can only get that strength from God. I know it sounds crazy but you can only get that strength from God literally. I'm going to tell you a story real quick and I'm going to end this video. We were in a shelter, me and my son. And this was in St. Paul. And we, like I said, I get up, I go. Like, I literally, I get up, I go. I don't stay. They, they barely ever see me. I'm in now. I have things to do. So we was up at like 6. I took my son downstairs. We had breakfast before everybody else came down. Um, I didn't really eat much. I had a fruit. Um, but I made my son eat cereal. Like, I made him eat before we left. And we were outside, we went for a walk. At this time, it was like seven or something. So we're outside, we're walking, because nothing was open. I do believe it was the weekend. Um, outside. Up until about 12, when it was lunchtime. So I figured, okay, he might be hungry again. I had a couple dollars in my pocket, but it wasn't enough to like go buy him a full lunch. So I was keeping track of the time. We went back to the shelter. Um, I fed him. I think I nibbled on something a little bit cool we went back outside he wants to play i have a very active son you know he just don't care where he is he just want to play so i took him back outside and he uh, we were just outside he was running around and this guy came up to us white guy and his two sons and mind you we're sitting around other homeless people it was like somebody sleep homeless. They would sleep over there on a the bench or something. It was like somebody else. But the park was people, people who were outside running. It was like a coffee shop nearby. Really nice. But you had like a mix of people. So I was sitting on the bench. My guy, his two sons came. Well, they was probably about 13. Probably one was like, I don't know. Maybe 10 or something. like that. I don't know. Uh, so he came up to us and he said, are you okay? And I said, like I thought it was really random. I'm like yeah you know we're good thank you he said i'm asking because i was out here running at six o'clock in the morning he said and i saw you and your son out here he said and then you know we back out here again and I'm, i see you guys again and this was crazy i never tell people my business ever but when he said that i said no we actually stay at the shelter up the street i said and so i brought him outside earlier and then we went and ate and we came back and he was carrying these two book bags. And he said, I'm going to give you these two book bags. He said, every Sunday, this is how I know it was a weekend. Because he said, every Sunday we go to church. He said, but I didn't get the chance to take my kids to church today. He said, so we went to Walgreens. We bought these backpacks. We filled them up with stuff. And we just decided to come out and pass them out. He said, and I just, you know, something in my spirit just told me to bring you these book bags that you needed them. Which is crazy because we were literally sitting around people who looked homeless. Like people who were sleep on benches. And me and him were like, you know, we were dressed and, um, you know, we were just outside. And, you know, he was talking. And I just, you know, it was amazing. It was just amazing to me. And he was... I mean, the two book bags were filled. They had socks and t-shirts and candy bars and water and juices and, um, yeah, it had a lot of stuff in each of the bags. And he said, I'm going to give these to you. He said, because I don't, you know, I don't see you. He said, I see these people out here. He said, but for you to, you know, be out here with your son and you're out here all day, you're keeping him happy and you're smiling. He said, something in my spirit just told me to come and give these to you. Then he decided... You know, I was like, we was talking to him. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm so grateful. Da, da, da. His sons were the ones that had the book bag. They gave us the book bag. We talked for a couple minutes. And then he was like, I just want to give you the money in my pocket. And he had like 60 or $80 in his pocket. I remember the big 20s. And he said, you can have all the money in my pocket. He said, if you ever need anything, he gave me his phone number. He was like, if you ever need anything, you know, just give us a call. And I thought it was amazing. I cried for like a long time sitting outside. And I was so happy I took my son, got him something to drink from the coffee shop behind us and you know we sat outside a little bit longer because this was just after lunch so you know other than that it was dinner and it was amazing you know it was just that's the stuff that God does for you 
And that's when I say you got to be strong. You can only get that from God because nothing else or nobody else is going to know what you're going through. I think it was perfect that we were out there that morning and we wasn't looking for anything. And then here's the afternoon and it's perfect. I didn't even know this running because there was so many people running and like I couldn't have picked them out. And so, you know, God is listening and God is watching and you just have to like keep your head up. Really, you have to really keep your head up. It's hard, but God gives you things that you can overcome. He's not just going to give them to you when you're just going to go jump off a bridge and kill yourself. Like that wasn't Jesus' goal. He gave it to you for a reason. And all you have to do is go through it. It's hard, I know. Trust me. All you have to do is go through it. There's so much on the other end. And you learn something about yourself. You learn things about the world. You learn things about family, about friends, good and bad. But you grow from the situation. And I wouldn't be the woman that I am today. And I wouldn't be, you know, how I am today. I think way differently. I am way differently. If I wouldn't have gone through those experiences that God allowed me to grow through. And so, with that being said, for everyone who's in the shelter, this video is 30 minutes. <laughs> for everyone who's in the shelter, like, you guys can do it. Guys, it's not the end of the world. I know it may feel like it. And people be like, you know, you know, <laughs> people will say things. And it's like, look, if you're not about to help me, don't talk to me. You know, and it's just that attitude. You know, like, I need help. And you got to leave it to God. That's the only option. <laughs> that is the only option. You got to get up. You got to look at your kids. And you got to go for it whatever it is whatever it is trust me i know you have to go for it and work hard and do what you gotta do so with that being said i hope this reaches somebody i really really do um i love all of you it's almost time for me to finish getting ready i'm going out to eat for my birthday you know i'm i'm blessed i am really blessed and so i love you guys I love you guys. Love you guys. Um, and just stay tuned for more jewels. Make sure you hit that notification bell so that you don't miss these amazing story times and these amazing jewels or these amazing wigs. <laughs> and I'll see you next video. Bye.